Happy Migraine Awareness Month, everybody. I hope you're enjoying our Thriving with Migraine interview. It's got to meet so many interesting people today. We're talking to Kevin, who's a sports chaplain. We'll find out all about that. Kevin, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on today. Tell us what is a sports chaplain? What do you do? Okay, so a sports chaplain is um, a chaplain who is a person of faith, so a Christian. Um, who is able to go into a sporting club and be a uh, listening ear. Obviously, we have to um, maintain confidentiality. Um, we're often called on in the bad times with, like, if someone passes away or uh, if there's a major injury or something like that. And I've had a couple of those at the club that I'm involved in. Um, I've had to do a couple of debriefs. Mm -hmm. But on the day to day, it's just checking in with the players, the support staff, um, and making sure that they're all doing okay. And for me, that helps me. Um, even sometimes in my lower points in life, um, just to help others helps me as well. So it's a two-way street in what I see it as. But yeah, mainly just being there for people, being a confidential ear and being someone they can call on that's not the coach or um, anyone else, like another player or parent. Yeah. Fair we enough. Don't have, and how did you have... get into that? Uh, so my uncle's a sports chaplain uh, in Melbourne. Um, he does a lot of the motorsport, um, like V8s and other motorsport levels. So he's my inspiration for being a chaplain. He's been doing it for 25 years. Uh, this is my eighth mm -hmm. year now with uh, North Adelaide in the SANFL. So that's my inspiration, the reason why I do it. Um, and we catch up as a, a sports chaplaincy group, often with a meal, just to encourage each other, not share our stories, but, you know, we can also get, I guess, prayer for each other as well if things are going a bit rough. Uh, like if we're going to do a debrief or someone's passed away and we just want to help that family. Um, yeah, just going with that covering from other people as well. Um, it's really helpful. So your family's really important to you then? Oh, my family, yep. So my family, but also my football family. So I've been at the club mm -hmm. for eight years, so they are family to me. All the male players are like brothers, all the female players are like sisters, um, and all the younger guys under 13s, 14s and 15s are like my sons and, and my daughters in the women's side as well, So or the junior girls' side as well. That's fantastic. It's great to have that sense of community, um, particularly because migraine can get a bit lonely. So let's talk about your migraine. When did you first start getting attacks and what kind of symptoms do you get? Uh, so it goes right back to about 12 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I was working up in the hills, so I'm in Adelaide. I was working up in the hills, a place called Monado. Uh, we had, I was up at 4 a.m. to get out there by 6 to run the, the pre-start meetings for safety um, and then doing a 10, 12 hour day to drive home. I was renovating my house. I was working, uh, volunteering for the church, running different conferences and things like that as well. Um, and at the same time, my son was born, so my son's 12. Um, he was born at the same mm -hmm. time as well. So probably lack of sleep, burning the candle at both ends um, caused me to have burnout. And then I just started getting headaches and they thought it might've been a CPAP uh, or an issue mm -hmm. with not sleeping properly and not being able to breathe properly in my sleep. So I've also got a sleep pap machine, which unfortunately hasn't helped. But yeah, just, I guess gradually for the 12 years, I've had a, probably a three or four out of 10 headache that came on and it's, it's been there just for every day since. It never goes away. Um, but mm -hmm. the migraines on top of that is obviously the killer side of, uh, you know, laying in bed for days, if not weeks sometimes. So that can be mm. pretty, pretty tough. Have you found anything that worked? Some of the medications seem to, I'll say, lessen them. They never actually mm -hmm. go away. Like I, I can have a good week or maybe a good month. I'd be pushing mm -hmm. to say I've had a good three months in that whole 10, 12 year period. Um, normally it's a good week or a good couple of weeks where I've only had like a slight headache or decent headache. Like I said, I, I live with a slight headache every day, but it's the, when the migraines come on, you know, wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. with a thumping migraine, nauseous, and we all know the symptoms <laughs> of a migraine. Uh, when that comes, it's just not much I can do but lay in the dark. Um, and if it, if it seems to go on for days, if not weeks, I can potentially rise out of bed late afternoon, just before dinner, um, and just mm -hmm. basically move from the bed to the lounge, maybe have a banana or something soft to eat to try and get rid of the nausea and then kind of work my way in, I'll say to the day, but obviously work my way into the evening, unfortunately. So I miss mm. sometimes a lot of daytime, um, potentially. It must be very tough for you being in a job where, you know, game day is game day. Yep. Um, and game day can't be rescheduled because you got a migraine, yep. uh, just like it can't be for a player. How does that affect you? Like, how does that affect your ability to work and, and how does that affect your mental health? Yeah, we're just going back on the work thing. So I haven't actually worked full time for 12 years. I've had about 15 jobs in the last 12 years, but I guess potentially the first six years of that 12 years. So for the last six years, I pretty much haven't worked at all full time. The chaplaincy role is all volunteer and I don't get paid for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't work in employment to, to get money for the family. Uh, fortunately, my wife is yeah. very, 
very good in that and understanding. Obviously, it's been a journey for the whole family. So, you know, the kids know about it as well, obviously. But yeah, if I can't be at game day, it's disappointing for me. Um, I'm always up front. So the club knows where I'm at with my with my migraines. Um, so is uh, another, I'm with a basketball club as well as a chaplain now as well. So I'm a glutton for punishment sometimes, but um, it's, it's what I do. I love helping people. And as I said earlier, helping people helps me. But if I can't be there, I get very frustrated. With the migraines can become mental health. So if it's weeks, is it weeks in bed, you know, my mental health can suffer as well. So, um, but they're all understandable. They know I'm a volunteer. When I'm there, I'm there, I give 100%. When I'm not there, I'm struggling. I want to get back there. But yeah, unfortunately, you got to wait that out sometimes. That's just the way it is. There's nothing you can really do about it. Um, no, that's true. And I know it can be incredibly difficult. So thank you very much for sharing your story. Do you have a tip for somebody else who uh, might be struggling um, and, and is looking for a way that they can thrive with migraine? I guess the first thing, and we spoke about family being important before, is being open and honest with your family and your close friends. Now, you don't need to tell everyone, obviously. But even at the football club, obviously, my family first, they all know where I'm at, both with migraines and it's been a 10-year journey. So with migraines and uh, the mental health that obviously becomes poor because of the migraines. Um, mm -hmm. So my family are well aware of that. Um, there's some things I just can't go to birthdays or whatever because I've got a migraine. And obviously that puts more pressure on myself because I want to be there but can't. Um, from a footy point of view, the key people know why I'm not there when, I'm, when I say I should be there. And they're understandable. So I guess just being open and honest, don't try and hide it because they're going to know anyway if you're not going to be there. So if you can be up front without being you know, to coming as a negative saying, oh, I'll be there when I can, um, mm. which we all can say that, but, you know, it's you don't want to turn it to a negative that I'm not going to be there very often, if that makes sense. So it's just yeah, being open with them. That. And I've done that with uh, employment as well when I was trying to, to get jobs, obviously through the medicals and stuff, you've got to tell them where you're at. Um, yeah. And some employers are, are okay with that. Um, obviously, if it's a part-time, it's probably easier, but the full-time role, you don't really miss in days and weeks that just doesn't isn't good for the employer um so mm. that's kind of my fight or flight mechanism i've actually quit a number of jobs because of my migraines not so much being sacked um it's the fact that if i can't mm. be there and can't give 100 percent, then mm. i struggle with putting that pressure on myself that i need to be there all the time and same as football yeah. and basketball as well so yeah yeah i think a lot of us have jumped before we felt we were getting into the range where we might be pushed um <laughs> yeah yeah, which is, it's pretty common. Uh, you will you will see that conversation pop up every now and then in the Migraine Australia chat group, you know, of, of how do you manage staying at work? Um, yep. and, and when do you kind of make that call of you can't do it anymore? Yeah. Um, but thank you, Kevin, for sharing your story. I think it's really valuable, um, particularly because we don't have a lot of men willing to speak out. Um, and of course, they are 30% of people who live with migraine. So I really do appreciate it. Have a happy Migraine Awareness Month. Thank you.